Yeah, this is Cohen Buzz. I want the sound check at 4.30 sharp. And no reporters until after the show, okay? Good. Man, I'll tell you something about Stromberg Auditorium. It's new and it's big and beautiful, but management's a bunch of amateurs. Well, is everything going to be all right? I'm not going to let anything go wrong after we've worked this long. Angel, David, you though. just said they're amateurs. Yeah, I just have to stay on them, that's all. You just worry about the show, opening night, the concert circuit, and I'm not going to let any man, woman, or machine come between you and Destiny. <laughs> yeah. Cohen, this is Russ. Let's speak to Becky. Um, I'm sorry, no interviews till after the show. <laughs> just another reporter. Female, 28, 6 foot, 120 pounds. I'd like to meet professional men. I love outdoors, nice walks on doors. Barry Manilow, slot 142. P.S. I look like a pit bull terrier. He doesn't say that. Here, I circle all the girls under 5'4 just for you. Hey, stack those pallets. I'll just throw them down. Hey, Gil, uh, I was kind of wondering, when are you going to take Vicky on the stake? Were you there when I asked? Rackball club. I mean afterwards. I don't know. She must have an apartment. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Dad. Where would you like me to take her? I mean, hey, I could take her out for a malt at malt shop. Huh? I mean, isn't that how you'd handle it? And in no seconds flat, I'd have her down to one straw instead of two. I don't want you to have her down to. What do you want, huh? The pictures? Gil, I'm just trying to, just trying to save you from the embarrassment. Thing. No, really, I'm serious. Vicky's a very conservative girl. Did you ever notice the way she dressed? She looks like she could be an editor for the National Review. Peter, those are the times one post. Yo, I don't like the idea of you using Vicky. And I bet you like the idea of you using her medicine, huh? I've never touched her. That's the sweet of luxury. It's fine, I'll let you know. That's what I'm saying. You see, uh, you're risky. I think you're jealous. I'm not jealous. This angle's not gonna work, buddy. You know, the day a girl intimidates me is the day I throw away the keys to my bed, the club, move into their house, and become a monk. Afternoon. Oh, I'm so happy. Is it teaching? Yes, it's teaching a special reading program at the Monroe Continuation School. It was one of the last positions open. And where is it? The Chesterfield area. Oh. Would you like to take your hug back? Lori, it's just that, well, Chesterfield is such a dangerous neighborhood. Sometimes I think more Ben's mother than mine. Ben's opposed to the job? Well, he has his reservations too. But it's where I belong. It's where I was led, so, so please don't try to talk me out of it. You know, I just wish someone would be happy about this and, and not try to use it for a sermon on how cruel the world is. Now, I didn't say it was a cruel world, but some parts of the world aren't as nice as others. All right. All right, I'm happy about the job. I suppose it's just that I 
presumed you'd be doing different things when you got married. Mm, like having little martinets? Among other things. Well, that's not out of the question, but for now I think I'll give my love to children already born. You'll pray for me? If you're going to Chesterfield, I'll do little else. <laughs> Am I late? Oh, that's all right, Doctor. I know you're really busy. So how's Marion? Well, as you know, she nearly regained consciousness, but now she slipped back into her comatose state. Yeah, a little bit of scare there. I, I mean, we were hoping, you know. Well, this is very typical of a comatose patient. It's hard to determine whether Miriam and just how close Miriam was to coming out of it. So then they can roller coaster like this for a long time. Quite possibly. But uh, there is a slight cardiac arrhythmia that we're trying to monitor. Doctor, without and... getting into all the medical jargon, if and when she does come out of this, will she be all there? Miss Lawson, I don't uh, enjoy being so vague, but I simply can't offer hope or discouragement when there's so many possibilities. She could come out of her state completely healthy, but there are less attractive possibilities. Such as? Uh, her motor skills could be impaired, uh, brain damage, a change of personality, even a loss of memory. Really? Well, that's not all that common, but it is possible. So, like, how much could she forget? Well, there could be total amnesia, anterograde amnesia. What's that, that anterograde amnesia? Well, that probably doesn't apply here, since the coma wasn't induced by an emotional cause. But there are instances when the coma can wash away any memory of emotional trauma or those events subsequent to that trauma. But this doesn't apply here, huh? Now, clearly, Miriam Mason is in a coma due to an overdose of arbitrance, not emotional stress. Well, Doctor, when can I see her? I'd, re I'd really like to be with her, just to talk with her. Should the patient regain consciousness, you'll be notified immediately. However, due to the circumstances surrounding her condition, I think the hospital staff would prefer that your friend not have any more visitors. Well, I won't take it personally. And here it is! The pulsating nucleus of the entire county complex, the epicenter of administrative tremors, and the seedbed of legal revisions. The vanguard Okay, okay, of... okay. I, I get the message. This is where you work. Mm-hmm. Did you enjoy the tour? Impressive. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Now, maybe you'll get your own office someday. You are as bad as mom. You <laughs> get, uh, give me get. Mm. Oops, sorry, Mr. Redmond. Next time I'll knock. Hey, Jason, come back here. I want you to meet my wife. This is Carla. Hi, Carla. I've heard a lot of good things about you, Mr. Commissioner. Oh, well, that's a load off my mind. You look familiar. Oh? Well, I was in show business once, but I'm, uh, my music wasn't her style. Carla Redmond, of course. It never dawned on me. Hmm. You've heard of me? Jason, don't tell of me you course. listen to blues. Well, not all that much, but I do have one of your albums. Which one? Oh, well, it's, uh, Santa Time. My second. Second. What was your favorite song? Oh, that's easy. First side, second song. I wrote that one, Expressway you, Blues. You wrote it. <laughs> Gene inspired that one, didn't you, honey? Mm, don't mind me. I just <laughs> work here. Oh, he's feeling left out. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I thought this place was empty. Who are you? Mary Richmond, Mark Severn Real Estate. Gee, if you need a place, just call me. I see you're already packing. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What are, what are we talking about? What is this if I need a place? I'm sorry. Weren't you notified? The owner of this townhouse, Dave Cohen, he's selling it. And I'll be handling the sale. Well, isn't that nice? It certainly is a lovely piece of property. Elevated dining area. Nice neighborhood. Two bedrooms? Two bedrooms, one bath. Great starter for up-and-coming exec. I guess you weren't up-and-coming fast enough. You leaving now? Yes, I'm going to you for a little visit. I don't even see Cohen there. Any messages? Yes. Tell him I have lakefront property right on this block. Here, take this card for him. <laughs> yeah, I mind if I just kind of, like, relay the message to him? All right. Are you waiting for me? Well, this place isn't sold yet. You know the old law? Possession is nine-tenths. That's like the old wives' tale. Out of sight, out of mind. You were... Russ, Russ Weaver, I don't have card. Just why are you going to New York? 
Cohen took something from me that belongs to me. Well, have a nice trip. See you again soon. Sure you uh, aren't related to Cohen? Maybe a sister or something? Cute. Real cute. Becky Hewitt bursts on the scene tonight at Stromberg Auditorium, 9 o'clock. Don't wake up the third encore. And that's all, all right? Three and you're out. That's not the E Street Band out there, and you're not Springsteen. All right. W what's this, the book library, maybe? <laughs> Maggie, I want this lady looking pretty punk. Maggie, take all the time you need. Okay, Please. Yes. yes, I'm nervous, but don't tell him. <laughs> yeah, so how long have they been on? 55 minutes. Get them off. I don't care. Pull the plug now. David, what's the matter? You've got a singles bar trio trying to pick the crowd before you get on. Mm. You know, I think I can handle the concert. I think I can handle the crowds. But him, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not surprised. You know you're his first. What do you mean? He's got other talent. He's only got one Becky Hewitt. One star, one chance. You can't blow it tonight. Security's broke down. I love it. They've got state troopers out there. They can't even keep the crowd off the stage. So is the other band finished they were booing them off, Angel. <laughs> Egg easy on the rouge. She's not a marionette. Angel, watch what she's doing, okay? So is the crowd, um, S-R-O? Yeah, stone dripped and overcharged. No. Here, babe. No, I'm fine. Watch what you're doing, okay? They said I couldn't book Mickey Mouse in Disneyland. Who's they? They, Angel. They. Everyone but me. And you, Angel. You put your trust in me. And I pulled it all together for you. I kept my end. I'm not gonna let you down. I'll make sure a band is setting up. <laughs> hey, uh, is that Miss Hewitt in there? No one's allowed inside. Hey, I'm no fan, man. I, uh, I got delivery. Just give it to me. I'll see that she gets it. Ah, uh, listen, this isn't far as, you know what I mean, all right? So, uh, come tell me that I should make uh, the delivery in person and get the stuff. Stuff? What's your name? Russ. Hey, look, she's probably really needing the stuff bad right now. Cohen didn't give me your name. Hey, look, I'm just a mule here. You know, I take my orders. If you want to be responsible for one of Cohen's ladies going up tonight, hey, fine. Let me see it first. Forget it, man. I'm gonna go get Cohen. How does a temporary gig for me? Come on. Who are you? Uh, listen, there's a DC 
you have to see some problem about the, uh, the lighting and everything. Hi. Hey, let me in. Dan, he took my keys. What? I was letting this guy in and he took my keys. I told you no visitors until after the show. He said it was a drop. Or orders. I've got my film. Who's me for Becca? Who was this guy? His name was Bus. Weaver! Weaver! He comes out of there, you hold him for me. It's an extra hundred. You kill him, it's an extra thousand! What are you doing here? Becky, listen, I want you back. You gotta listen to me, okay, please? I cannot listen to well, you. You're afraid I, that I, I'm gonna reach you, aren't you? No. That, that maybe you're seeing something, seeing Russ, me bring back something that was Russ, gone? I don't well, love you anymore. Gone back. I don't know if I ever did. It's not true. I, I don't believe that. I know you don't believe it or you wouldn't be here. But not believing it doesn't make it any less true. This is all just a flash in a pan. You're a rage. Next month, it'll be another rage. Russ, I've got to show Beck, you. Beck, you left something more than just your past in Kingsley. You left your future there, too. Russ, my future is here. Oh, come on. Wake up. This is, this is, this is not real. And it's a dream. It's not a dream. When I was living in that sewer with you and Kings, then this was a dream. When I was fending off guys like Phil Hayes in the Tiger's Paw, then this was a dream. But right now, there are 12,000 people out there, real people waiting for me. And I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to sing my dream right into being. Russ, you couldn't understand it before. Why should I think you can understand it now? Yeah. Hey, you're right. I can't compete with any of this. I don't have anything that I can give you, just myself. A minute ago I was a flash in the pan, and now you have your poor, helpless lover. You always assumed that it was just uh, fame and glory for me, didn't you? You think that I'm just here for the flash? Well, that's don't any, you? any girl's Cinderella story. Don't you can't deny that? Yes, I am denying it. Because all my life, Ross, I've had to keep everything inside. I've always had to hide. For me, you have. Yes, I've had to hide more from me than anybody else. But out there. Out there, Russ, all those feelings, the, the happiness, the, 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 the sadness, uh, it can all come out. All the feelings that I had to keep inside because you just didn't want to hear it. You what? Me! When you build a wall around something to protect it, Russ, it just dies of loneliness. But that's what I was there for, Beck. You were there for you. As far as my loneliness is concerned, you couldn't even... Well, maybe you me. wouldn't let me, huh? I, I tried. Russ, there is something inside of you me that I just have... You Double talking con artist and a handful of, of fans, and then what? All of a sudden, you're, you're some kind of fulfilled woman. Is that what you're trying to tell me? At least now I have somebody who'll listen to me. Beck, I, I live to listen oh, to you. Off it. He went from Lori to me to now she. The only thing you know how to listen to is your instincts. I left Lori because you were there. I found Sheila because you were gone. What it takes to fulfill me, you don't have. Now I'm going out there tonight, I'm going to set something free. Loud, resonant, and amplified. It's the real Becky Hewitt. Showtime, Major. Right. It's uh, 12,000 people waiting, huh? <laughs> 12,001. Milk this night for all it's worth. New York City!